In this video, I'm going to show you a couple of quick things that will make your life easier while using PowerShell. This is not the most complicated thing you'll learn, I'm sure, but just some ways to be more efficient in your everyday tasks. Let's begin by just looking at Windows PowerShell. When you launch it from the default icon with Windows, this is what you get. Nothing wrong with it, but you'll notice a few things. It's kind of bland, and I find I'm always tweaking it. I need to move the window around. I want to change the font size. I want to change how the window behaves. So to save myself some work every time I do this, I'm going to modify the shortcut that launches Windows PowerShell to take care of those things. There's also one other thing I'm going to take care of. You'll notice that it does not say administrator up here in the title bar. Even though I'm logged onto this computer with an administrator account, Windows PowerShell is honoring UAC. UAC is turned on as it is usually in Windows 8 and 8.1. And so I don't have an elevated Windows PowerShell or Windows Command Prompt session to work with. I just have that of a regular user. There are some tokens involved in the background that enforce what I can and cannot do. Now, there's nothing wrong with this. I can, in fact, choose run as administrator each time that I want to launch this as an administrator. Why I change the default on mine is because I'll be barreling away working on some script, doing something, and all of a sudden something won't work right. Or I'll go to launch a script that I've used a number of times before, and suddenly it won't work anymore. And I'll be having to stress and figure out why that would possibly be. Well, chances are I've invoked some kind of command that requires an administrative access that I don't have in the tokens underlying the security context of this particular window. So to avoid that problem and to avoid me forgetting all the time to click run as administrator, instead I've set up my shortcut and under advanced, I've just turned on this single checkbox that says run as administrator. Now this doesn't bypass UAC, but it means that each time I launch it, I'm automatically prompted to elevate to a administrative user. I don't have to remember each time. Then when I do this, administrator shows up in here and I know I've got the full administrator token and can go ahead and do whatever I wish to do in my PowerShell. I've also created a couple of little uh, tweaks just around the font size, make it a little bit easier to read on the recording, where I want the window positioned on the, on the screen, making the window a little bit bigger and just playing around with the colors for my own sense of what I like to see on my desktop. Some people, when they're running in an administrative mode, like to set this to a bright red, just so they know for sure that they're running as an administrator. Now, something a little more technical and a little more practical. One thing that you may encounter as you go to use PowerShell in day-to-day -day tasks is determining whether or not PowerShell is actually installed on a computer, or more importantly, which version of PowerShell is installed. Well, obviously, if we're running the PowerShell console, there's a version of PowerShell installed, installed somewhere. But if you are writing some kind of separate application that's going to use PowerShell, and you need to determine whether or not you have to install PowerShell while you install your application, the best way to do that is to check the registry. And there's some stuff in the Microsoft TechNet on how to go about that and exactly which keys to look for. But with, within a script, if we want to validate the version that we have, there's a couple of very easy ways to do that. One is to just use the word host, and that will reply with some basic information about where PowerShell is being hosted for this session. And it tells us that we're using the standard console host, and it is version 4.0. That's the version in Windows 8.1, which is the operating system that we're using here. Now that's fine and good, except that there are some third party hosts for Windows PowerShell. You can actually encapsulate PowerShell into other products. And if that were the case, that other product would report its version number here because it's the host. So rather than using the host variable, uh, this shortcut host is actually short for the full version host dot version. Um, it just gives us all the details and not just the single version. You'll notice that in this methodology, it says version 4.0. When you actually refer to it specifically down at the version level, you get it broken down as major, minor build and revision numbers. So that's all well and good, but we may want to be more correct and just eliminate the possibility of there being a third party host holding this. And so Microsoft has introduced a new variable called PS version table. And it as well has a, a subset PS version. 
and you'll see that it's exactly the same, which is what we would expect to find here. Now, querying the whole PS version table is also rather useful because it returns another, another bunch of interesting and useful information about the system. There's our PowerShell version, as well as things like the version of the common language runtime, what versions we're compatible with, our WS management stuff, uh, our remoting protocols, all there contained in one neat little table that we can query and work with within our PowerShell scripts so that we can elegantly provide useful information back to our user. We can't invoke something because they're running under an older version of PowerShell. So those are just a few little things to make your life a little bit easier to learn about your system and to get it configured the way you want to go ahead and be productive with other day-to-day -day PowerShell scripts.